Welcome back. In this session, we're going to be going through the stage one test environment. It's a little bit different than the proof of concept environment. It is really there to have all of the test cases, uh, both positive and negative. It's working with a smaller set of data. Um, and this test environment, we can execute the entire script all at once and it will give the system a really good test uh, to ensure that there's no issues or errors in it. So let's get started and let's start go going through this test environment. Okay, so here we are. We are looking at this, uh, this uh, run test on SN, that's subnet server 001. Uh, prior to doing this, uh, there was a number of setup steps and and you can see all this in a, in the regen environment discussion but you'll see that you know I had run this setup master data server set up the subnet 001 set up sub 02 set up three three runs on a different computer um, and now we're in this stage of it where we're actually running tests on it so here we need to make sure that we are in subnet 01 so there we are and now we can go through and just run this first test and all of this test is pretty simple all it's doing is adding a subscriber to an existing group and, and maybe we'll just take a quick look before we do that to show you what it looks like before uh, that was done and so here you can see that we've got uh, uh, subnet a subscriber group one organization 1.4 and 1.45 and this is adding in like a whole nother uh, organization into that hierarchy and then calling this hierarchy update so if i run this uh, and now if we go back and we take a look at it and rerun this we'll see that oh there this this one got uh, inserted in there the key thing about these tests is any data that was permitted to this group is now going to be exported to this 1.4.21. So, so that's really uh, what we are. We're, it's really a setup test, test. And then we, we're going to go through and run some different tests to see that the data is actually going through to these different systems. So if we run this first one, um, and by the way, I'm not going to be uh, switching to the other computer. You can do that uh, in your own time. I'm really just here to show you how running these tests look. In this case, we, we set up a change history record. Uh, we set up a subscription to uh, some data. And, and then we exported. And then we ran the distribute process. So if we take a look at these, these systems now and see what we've got. If we look at uh, on subnet one, where, we are, where we're at, we'll see that indeed this, this person got through to all those different systems. Like, so I know that you, know, you, you, you may think, well, geez, that data could have existed there. That's not the point of this test. The point is showing you this test script and showing you how it works so that when you go through and make changes to the system, you can run these tests and see if you are getting the expected results in these different uh, environments. And so here, we're gonna run it. Okay, so we did get the, the address went through. And so that's really what this first test is. Here, uh, I'm not gonna go to this subnet three, which is operating on a different computer. Um, I could do that as a part of another test if you were looking for some kind of a, a specific demo on uh, how all this works. But I'm really just trying to give you an overview of what these scripts look like. So in this case, we are creating a subscription to employee group for contact uh, uh, Philip Cooper for system four on subnet 02. So as soon as that subscription is gonna be set up for this person, they're gonna show up on this other subnet too. So if we could go there and I could show you that, you know, that that data does not actually exist. I'll, in fact, I'll do that now. I'll just do a quick show you, go to two. We're gonna run this, you know, looking for that, uh, for that data, for that person. 
No, they, they don't exist anywhere there. So now we're gonna go back to subnet one and now we're gonna run this test. And we are just basically setting up this subscription. So fairly, you know, simple process. It insert the subscription, do an export, do a distribute, and then we'll see that uh, whether everything exists properly there. So it's already exported. Uh, now if we go to this subnet two, we can go through and we can take a look and run this distribute process. Now in the proof of concept environment, we just set up scheduled jobs so we didn't have to do this. It would just automatically uh, run the distribute process every minute. Uh, here we're just manually running it and we could do that, that as well. So we're gonna run that. Okay, so now we've ran it. Now we should see those results come through here. Uh, so let's just run it and see. So yes, indeed, there he is. He's ran through again, you know, so before he wasn't there, now he is. So here we're doing a subscription to the whole rate, ta rate type table. So this is a different kind of subscription. We're just testing, hey, if we set up a subscription to an entire table for a system, would it properly go through to all the different systems? Again, I could go show you now that that data does not exist in those systems, but uh, you can do that on your own. And so we're gonna switch back to uh, subnet one, and then we're gonna run this process. And we're going to, it's going to set that subscription up to the entire table, and then, uh, and then it's going to cause it to get distributed. So if we look at this rate type table on system one, and we're operating in this system here, it should have gone through to five and six as well. So let's just take a look. So here, yes, we can see that one went through five and six. Now, what's interesting about this subscription is there was a filter on the subscription that was causing this one not to go through. And so this test is also verifying, can I uh, create a filter on a subscription and have that work properly? And, and indeed it did. And we could go to that other computer, run this and see if that, uh, that went through there. The one thing I wanna show you is this data is going through to the master data server. So if we go up here and go to this master data server, which is uh, operating right here and take a look at this, we'll be able to see tables and we're gonna see that we're gonna have a number of different packages. And there's this package with the uh, with this data and it's all ready for the system to pick up. It hasn't read it yet. So, you know, that's fine. And it will stay there. It's just like an email server until something reads that data. So, so I'm just showing you, you know, that part and how it works. So <clears throat> now if we go through uh, here, we are uh, setting up a subscription for all rate type records. So it's a temporal and it's setting up for some temporal tests that we're going to be doing later. So if I make sure I'm in the right subnet, I'll run this um, and we'll see that it's already done. Uh, if I take and look to see for the GL rate, did it show up? Uh, there is the GL rate there. You know, yes, those went through. Uh, in some of these uh, subscription, like a good, goods and services tax, it's not related to a province. So that's why that appears there. And this is what we're looking for, the subnet five and subnet six that it actually got through to those systems. We could also go to that other computer. If we went back to the packages and actually refresh that, we would probably see that there's another package. So there's this other package that went through to it that is going to that other um, external server, which has not been, of course, picked up. So here we're gonna test out the redaction capability. And what that does is it lets us override certain columns so that the data going through to them is either altered or nulled out. And a good example would be, let's say you had a company and they're doing a project for another company and they're sending them their activities, but they don't want their employees data going through with those activities. So then they change it so that only the main company's name is going through it. So it's like the, the main company is doing the activity. So 
Here, we're doing some redactions of data and showing how that works. We're setting up this project, doing an export. So very quickly, I'm going to show you how that works. Okay, so that's, that's gone through to this other system. Again, if we look here at these systems and this data, now we're looking at subnet one, which is the source system. And I'm just going to get rid of all these other outputs. If I run this, we're going to see uh, that we have a number of different people that are allocated. Now these are fictitious names that I have uh, from my scrambled data, but you can see that there's like all these fictitious names in terms of resource allocations to this particular project. If I go and I take a look at this same data on six, we're going to see something different. So what we're going to see in the, in the resource allocation now we're going to see that it's actually gone through to the main company and not to the individuals. And it'd be likewise if we were pushing through activity. So it's just showing that the activity process worked. If we look at the project, I believe that there was a, uh, there was a redaction here. I think that we were uh, taking out the base amount. I don't remember exactly. Again, you can go and look at it in, in your details, but uh, you know, and the key thing is, is that all the contacts didn't go through just that, you know, that one SHL uh, computer systems. Okay, so this next uh, test is adding a system seven into a hierarchical group at the third level. That's going to cause them to get a bunch of data. Uh, I was talking about this at the very beginning where we add something into a group and then now they get data that they wouldn't have otherwise gotten. And so like if we went to that system seven right now and tried to take a look at their data, let's just do that, close all. And we are going to run that and we're just gonna see what they got. You're gonna see they don't have any of this data. But then we're just gonna add them into this, uh, this group and we're gonna run this process. And that's gonna cause that data to go through to them just by adding them into the group. And now if we take a look at uh, this, uh, we can see that they're getting it. And one, I think one of the key points is we're adding it into the third level. So it's really testing the ability of the import export uh, to navigate the entire hierarchy. So that's an important part of it. Here's a special character test. And so it's really testing, hey, if I put through quotes and you know, all kinds of different symbols, is that gonna you know, properly go through to the, uh, to the system? So we'll run that test. Uh, it's a fairly quick test. So we just really just change the name of something. And so anything that was, uh, was subscribing to that data, is automatically going to get it because there was a change to it. So let's just take a look at the data, see if that went through, and indeed it did. So here's all these. So that's important. Now we're going to test the undo uh, capability. And so the undo will take a change history record and undo it so that it will revert it to its original form. Of course, it's checking, was there any updates that I need to uh, consider, you know, so that things are done in the proper order. So it does all that stuff. But here we can see we're running the change history undo and then we're running an export. Then of course the undo causes the uh, change history record to get, uh, to get uh, created. So we can see that ran. I'm going to go to the contact, see if what's happened. Oh, boom. And you can see it's restored that name properly. So this one is making an update to this Clayton Barnes name to include an X and then adding two addresses form, one of which won't go through because uh, the address is not, uh, is not subscribed to because of the where clause. Maybe it's, I think it's only home addresses are going through. So here we'll run this test and it will, uh, it'll execute. And so it's already done. And so now we can see uh, the addresses. But here, I think I, the, probably the most important thing is looking at the addresses. And you will see that system one has 
uh, three different addresses, but it, one of those addresses didn't go through to, uh, or yeah, one of those addresses did not go through to uh, systems five, six, and seven. So it's really, again, testing that ability to screen out data. So now we're gonna go down further in here. Again, I'm not testing these updates on um, the subnet server, but it is always interesting to take a look at the packages and, and refresh this. And you can see how much data is waiting for that uh, system to pick up now. And so as soon as we invoke that system, it's gonna pick up all this data and apply it in the correct sequence. So, now we're going to test uh, the undo, but we're undoing a, a transactional update. And a transactional update tends to affect more than one record. So as an example, you go into a member record and you update their name and change the, their address and maybe you change their relationship to their employer and then you save it. Well, that would be a transactional update. And so this is really testing if we, you know, can we undo a transactional update? And so this is gonna run, there it's ran. Now we're going to see uh, what's happening. I'm not gonna go through the contact, but you can see that those addresses that we saw previously are gone and it's restored them to the original state. So here we're making a temporal update. So this, this test is testing, you know, the temporal update capabilities. And so we could run this, uh, it's going to set that uh, temporal update. Um, it, it basically stores it in JSON and then passes it to the temporal update function, which will set up all the segments and merge and do anything that it needs to do and store it in a consistent way and then export the data. So we're going to run that. Uh, so we, uh, let's take a look at the results now. We'll see what we've got. And we will see that you will see, yes, that, uh, that, uh, that rate is getting updated properly. And, and it is active from, um, from 1999 to 2021. And then it's effectively going back to the original rate. So again, this is just testing the temporal update capabilities, making sure that everything is working from that perspective. And here we're going to test uh, actually a physical delete of a record and make sure that the change history is picking it up, but it's also pushing it through. And in this case, we're actually deleting uh, a whole uh, GL rate that has an ID of one. And so uh, typically you probably wouldn't do it that way, but this is just for testing, hey, can we do an, a deletion of a record and have that go through properly? And so we'll run that <clears throat> and it's already done. If we take a look now to see, you know, do, do we have any that are ones? No, nope, they're all gone. That's it we expect. Again, we're testing the undo capability. Can we undo a deletion of a record and have that flow through to the systems properly? So if I'll run that, it's already completed. If I run this now and take a look there, you can see that it did the undo of the deletion and then pushed it through to all the different uh, systems. So uh, here we are creating a new gender type. And so this is, we're testing the ability for it to deal with a foreign key reference and push through the foreign key references uh, to the destination system. So there's, these systems aren't uh, subscribing to the gender type. They're only getting it because it's a foreign key reference. So if we run this particular test, we will see that it's going to set this new gender type up and then export it. So here I want to show you that we've got this gender and there's that new gender type that we set up there. Um, the contact is being assigned that gender type. And then we're going to go to subnet 02. So we're going to a different subnet here. We're gonna run this, the distribute, and then we're gonna to check to see what it's got. And we will see that, where is it? Uh, sorry, the, uh, 
there. So the, the gender type did flow through properly and it fl flowed through because it was a, a foreign key reference and that's really what we're testing here. So here, uh, so far we've just done kind of like two levels. The three levels is something like you have a, a main organization uh, set some data up and then there's a subsidiary organization that adds data to that and then there's a tertiary organization that gets uh, stuff that from the secondary uh, organization. So this is really testing a three level update to make sure that it can all function properly. So let's run that. Oops, I needed to switch back to the, uh, the other subnet. Okay, let's run that test and it's already done. And now let's see uh, what our rate types look like. So here the key thing is we're looking at uh, system five, so here, and you can see the, the key thing is that these, uh, the system ID, where it is coming from. And so we can see that system five added in something and then it was actually showing up at the lower levels. So there's a number of negative tests here. Uh, I'm, you know, we're doing stuff like changing uh, changing database definitions. Maybe I'll just go up here and talk about some of these. So, you know, in this example, you the system that you're exporting to drops a table. Well, the system will handle that. It'll handle it if, you, if it dropped a column. It'll handle it if uh, it inserted a column and it didn't have a default value. In all of these circumstances, it's going to provide messages and then those messages can be acted upon. And you can even do things like override a message to say, uh, okay, I know that this, this column doesn't exist on this table, but uh, we're gonna proceed anyway because I have a default value established for it. It even does something like where you have somebody and they have a, a, a record that's been subscribed to, they updated that record after it came in and then you get another update from that master record. So it's gonna handle stuff like that. And so these are all these negative tests. Again, you can go through them. You can check them out uh, to make sure, you know, please add tests as you, as you see fit. Uh, here, we're, we're trying stuff like overriding a message and making sure that, that we can now import that data successfully. Uh, here, we're adding in excuse me, we are eliminating a table and a column, exporting data to it and seeing how it's gonna handle that. So these are all negative tests and you can see where we're checking to see uh, that the results have gone through properly. Then I actually get into setting up differences for all the different systems. Like I set up a vehicle registry in one system and I set up a land registry in another system and a, and a, um, Danielle, there's, I think there's three different registries that get set up. And then what we're doing this for is we are actually altering those structures and we wanna see that if we aggregate the data into a data warehouse, is that actually gonna work? So you can see there's quite a bit of time and effort that has gone into uh, creating all these exceptions and making sure that everything is going through properly. And I'm just highlighting all this stuff and then I'm gonna run this. So. So we'll run it and it will just take a moment. So it's already done. And then here we could actually generate a, the data warehouse based on uh, one, five, six, seven. So that's a kind of a hierarchical list. We'll run this. Uh, this is a fairly small system, so it doesn't take too long. And it's just providing some information in terms of how it's updating the data in that system. So we'll just let this run and it's already complete. So it's already taken all that data and aggregated into a data warehouse. Then we could go through in the data warehouse and uh, in this case, we are making an update and seeing that update will flow through to that system. So I'm just showing you some different tests that have, that have occurred. So that's really the end of the uh, stage one test script. Uh, the key thing is you can do stuff like go up here 
and uh, and rerun a test. So I could go up here uh, and recreate this the uh, these this all the systems from backups and then rerun it. And the other thing that's important about this, I could just highlight this entire thing if I've made some updates, run it and see if I can get through the entire test script with no issues. So that's the, uh, that's the testing of the, the stage one test. I do wanna show you that there are some other single tests that occur. Uh, probably the most expansive one is this change history temple, temporal and undo integration test, which go through and test that whole thing in a more extensive way. Although both the stage one testing and the proof of concept testing are pretty extensive as well. So anyhow, so that's really the, uh, the test environments. Again, thank you for your time. I hope you found that useful and look forward to the next session with you.